Okay, so Adam and I are going to put these three flats together. We've got them face down on the ground. Before we did that, we did a nice job just sweeping the floor, making sure that there's nothing that's going to damage the face of the flat. Uh, even though these flats themselves are in really poor condition, it's just good practice to make sure that you're working on a nice, clean surface. Uh, generally, when you're working with flats, you've got your toggles. Uh, these ones are sort of at two foot centers. Uh, the toggles are these parts right here. And ideally, you want it so that your flats uh, have toggles that all line up. It's uh, not going to affect the stability of this wall that much that these ones are not, that they're off center. But it's, it's something that other carpenters on set are going to look at. If you see if you have a flat that sort of looks sloppy, it's, uh, it's not going to be great for your reputation. So what Adam and I are going to do is we're going to screw the flats together to make sure the seams are nice and tight. Then we're going to stiffen it with whaler, and then we're going to be able to stand it up and have it in place with jacks. So we've got our flats face down, and you can see these flats, they do have a bit of flex to them, they're not perfectly straight. And the way that we're going to get the seams to be perfectly flat is as I'm actually screwing the seams together, I'm going to be standing on the pine. So if I'm standing on the pine right here, and both of these pieces are flat against the ground, I can put my screw in, and then when I stand it up, my seam is going to be correct. Uh, there's lots of different places where you could put your screws to screw these three flats together, but you want to have some sort of order to it. Uh, it's going to make the people who have to then take the flats down later, it's, uh, it's going to make them much happier. I like to put my screws uh, around where the actual toggles are going to be. This is going to help so that you're not going to rip the pine framing from the Luan face. Uh, and it's going to give you a nice straight joint. And if you put them all in from one side, so in this case, Adam's going to be doing that seam, I'm going to be doing this seam. We're going to put all of our screws in from uh, my right side into the left side. And we're going to have them all, in this case, let's go, uh, we're going to put it above the bottom rail right here, and above each of the toggles, and then one at the top. And they're all in the same spot. So now when somebody else has to take this apart, they know where to look for the screws and they're not going to have to try and find the screw buried. Okay? You might be dealing with flats that are slightly different in overall size. They might, one might be a quarter inch taller or half an inch or whatever. Uh, for what we're doing here, because we're actually going to be standing these up like so, it's most important that this bottom edge is perfectly flush. So we're going to start from the bottom and we're going to work our way up. We're using number eight wood screws, these ones have a Robertson tip, and they are an inch and a half long. If you drive them in too far, they're going to be poking out the other side right here, and they're going to cut somebody if they're trying to handle the flats. So we're going to try and drive them just the right amount, and if, for whatever reason, maybe our uh, stog is a little bit thinner and we're finding that the screws are actually poking out a little bit, one of the tricks you can do is put it in at a slight angle, and that's going to make it so that you don't have any of the tip sticking out so that nobody's going to bleed on set. Okay? So I'm going to line up this seam first of all, so I've got it nice and flush. You're not going to line up, do anything with that just yet, because then we're just going to be fighting over uh, where this middle flat's going. So I've got this, the two pieces flush across the bottom, and I'm going to step on them to make sure that they're actually flat, and the face is going to be perfectly flush, and now I can just drive my screw. Battery. Thank you. Okay, so there's my screw. It's not poking out at all. And now I'm just going to work my way up the flat. I've got screws just in my pocket, but you're going to want to have it in a pocket or in the pouch. So you're not constantly having to get up and go to the box of screws to get just one more screw. And we're going to go up above. I'm just going to keep on going, working my way up the seam. When I'm building really large walls, I might have multiple people putting a flat together, but I only need to have one person working on the seam at a time. And Adam, you can start working your way up that seam.
So we're going above the toggles here because it's making it a bit easier for everyone to walk in to see what's going on. But you can see how awkward it is for Adam to hold the drill like that. Generally, if we were doing this, we'd be putting the screw back here or just in any spot where it's going to be easy for us to actually hold the screw gun. When you're doing really large walls, it doesn't make sense. Like say I had a wall that had 20 flats. It doesn't make sense to have 10 people all doing the seams. A lot of times when you're in the set, you'll have a few people doing the seams and then other people coming up behind them grabbing whaler, grabbing jacks, and getting all of the next tools so that the people using the screw guns can just keep on fastening things and they just keep on getting fed with material. We're going to be putting our jacks on here. Sorry, our whaler. We're going to put two whalers on this wall. We're going to have one down here at two feet. And the next one is going to be up. We basically want it to go uh, as high as we can go where we're still going to be able to hit it with one of our jacks. If we put it, I'm going to just slide it up to the top. So unlike the wall at the beginning of this film, that was actually fastened, uh, the jacks were actually fastened directly to the flats. You actually fasten your jacks to the whaler. And then it's all going to stand up together. So it's important that your whaler are oriented in the same way and they're actually spread out enough so that you have something to screw to. Because if we had a jack at two feet like this, and we had another jack down, and we had another whaler further up, we're not going to be able to actually catch anything. So we need to make sure that we're going to be able to hit it. Earlier in this film, James was talking about how he didn't like this style of jack. Because there was nothing to actually, this piece right here wasn't very stiff. So you can see, if I'm only able to screw it up at the very top right here, this jack has a ton of flex from this point to this point. There's nothing to stiffen it like this piece is doing for all of the rest of it. Uh, in this application, it's not going to kill us. Okay, so we're going to get the jack out of here for now. And we're going to screw our whaler. And one really nice thing you can do with your whaler, if you screw it just above the toggle, like this, you're going to make a lot of people on set happy, because now you've got a nice little ledge back there where people are going to put their coffee. Uh, we don't encourage people putting their coffee on the set, but it's going to happen, and now the coffee's not going to spill. Okay, you still got your screw gun. I'm going to grab mine. We're going to grab screws into the whaler. Okay, so we're just going to eyeball this so it's fairly straight. And it's another great reason for having all of your toggles line up. Now when I can put my whaler in, it's a lot easier to have it all line up if, and have something to screw to for the entire length if my toggles are in the same spot. Okay. I'm just putting a screw in every single time I come to a seam. One screw into either side of the seam. And then over here, because I've just had the toggle to screw to, I'm just going to put another screw right there. I'm just going to do the same thing up there. Is this one? Uh, you're just going to have to position it so that it will hit all of the toggles.
when you're putting your screws in the whaler, you don't want to go too close to the edge because this pine will split. So if you just come a few inches in from the edge of the board, it should be okay. If you have a particularly dry whaler, sometimes you have to use a countersink bit. So the countersink bit just looks like this. And all it's going to do is it's going to uh, create a hole so that both the body of the screw and the head of the screw isn't going to be able to act as a wedge and split the wood apart. So over here I was having all sorts of problems with splitting. So in this case, I just drill a hole. And now I should be able to put a screw in with no problems. So we're going to put two jacks on for now. We're probably going to shift these once the wall is already up because both of these edges are actually going to be held in place by corners where we might not need jacks at all. But for now, we're going to put the jacks on just so we can leave the wall standing and we don't need to worry about it falling on top of us. So I'm just going to eyeball the bottom of the flat. Make sure that the jack is lining up the right way. And take a tape measure. Just measure to the edge. I'm going to go, say, 18 inches from the edge. It's a fairly arbitrary number. And I'm just going to put two screws in wherever I actually hit one of my whalers. So, Adam, you can do the exact same thing. It's just going to line up flush with the bottom and 18 inches from the edge. If you have to go more to get more on top of that toggle, that's perfectly fine. Sure. Well, Adam, 
shadow screwing that one in place. I'm going to jump to the next step, and that's just going to be grabbing some sandbags. Stand this up, we actually have something to weight it down with. Jonathan, I'm going to get you to put that on the tripod. Because we're going to need a hand just 